time now is 6.13 p.m. on um, August 19th. Um, so yeah, let's talk about what happened today. I have quite a bit to talk about. So um, yeah, let's, um, let's give an overall appraisal of how much I like today, how much I enjoy today. Um, not very great, actually. Uh, I mean, it's... It's good, but it could have been better, and I'll explain why. Um, um, actually, it's pretty good. Actually, it's pretty good, but there's one thing I'd like to point out. So, at 11.30ish, I decided to leave my apartment to go to the college campus, and um, I missed bus number 17. Again, the bus systems in, in LA is absolute fucking garbage. Um, so I tried to take bus 17 down, but there's not going to be one until 20 minutes later. So I actually spent about 20 minutes walking or 15. I'm a fast walker, 15 minutes walking down. And then I waited for bus seven and I took bus seven. And, uh, again, I overshot by two stations and I had to walk back and then I entered the campus, entered the freaking thing. And, uh, wow, this is, um, Crazy, actually. Um, crazy isn't the word. Um, fancy. Um, full of life. Lively. Lively. Yes. Populous. There are so many people. There are balloons. There are a lot of booths set up. A lot of, uh, you know, there's music blasting. And there's people walking everywhere eating food, and pretty much 90% of the people are not wearing masks. Um, so I wore masks mostly, but when I was at the booth, I actually took it off. And I also um, took it off sometime later. But um, wow, you know, it's just very fun and full of people and it's wild, basically. So I immediately was able to spot Aika. So Aika is one of the reasons why I wanted to go today is because I want to speak to her. I mean, I know I'll, I'll be able to see her again on the 26th, but otherwise, if she doesn't end up in my class in film 32, then it's over, basically. So, um, it's a bit of a gamble. And, um, of course, I want to see Thomas because it's been a whole month since I've seen the guy and maybe I could meet a lot of other people, you know. Um... And also free lunch. I got to have a free fucking lunch, um, which I will talk about later. Um, but yeah, I arrived and uh, right off the bat, I saw Betsy, uh, who, uh, who was the former uh, president of film club, just with a selfie stick and a phone just filming around. And I was like, oh, hey, Betsy, uh, where's Thomas? Where, where's the ETC place? And she's like, oh, down there. Oh, I'm going there too. So we went to the booth. And I saw uh, Thomas wasn't there at first. At first, it was just um, um, this European man with black hair um, who looks a little bit like Ad Adam Ragazia, and then a very tall white European man, um, East European accent, and looks like the main character in Funny Games, uh, the, the Austrian movie Funny Games. And those two people turns out to be Theo, an Italian man, who is the president of film club, and Mateusz, who is a Polish man, who is the current vice president of film club. And um, I didn't see them, um, and um, um, so yeah, this is the first time I've seen them. I, I don't know who Mateusz was prior, but I knew who Theo was because... He's quite active on Discord, and judging by his profile picture on Discord, I thought he's a very tall, muscular man, but actually he's kind of kind of like a nerd <laughs> when you look at him in person, and especially given that he's dressed like a pirate um, for this uh, film club promotion thing. Um, <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of funny. He actually looks kind of like a nerd. Um, um, yeah, so a while later, after waiting for a while, um, Thomas shows up, and uh, it's cool, it's good. And uh, we stood around for a little while and then we got to have free lunch. So we were given a ticket, uh, a lunch ticket. And at around uh, 1 p.m., I and Thomas went to, um, Thomas got 
his ticket first because apparently he didn't get it. And then we went to an in and out food truck inside the campus to have a cheeseburger. So this is the second time in my life I've had in and out and I'm so glad I had in and out before I left because otherwise this would be my first time and it would be awkward because I can't film my reaction and stuff. But I had the cheeseburger, which is the same thing I ate the first time. And uh, it's also with a pack of chips and also a soda and that's it, you know, no fries, nothing. And it's not bad, it's, it's a good burger. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't say mind blowing, but it's a good burger. I and Thomas, we sat down and we talked about Script Writing Club, we talked about the short film and that's pretty much it. And then we went back and for a little while I walked around the, the aisle. So there's a road in my college campus and it's just booths all on the two sides of this road and more booths on a grass field. And um, I walk by and I don't see a lot of interesting things going on. Um, so not every single club has a booth here. So Korean society, Japanese society, Hong Kong society, stuff like that. Not at all. Nope. Um, but um, Aika's there. So Aika's not with us for some reason. Aika's, Aika and Kat are at another booth doing something else. I don't know what's going on. And there were multiple chances. There are multiple moments when I actually had the chance to speak to her, but I didn't. Um, so at first I was like, okay, I'll wait until at the very end when you know, it's all finished. I can just walk up to her and say hi, you know. Um, and um, so before it ended at 2 p.m., I didn't. I just, I was standing at a far and I looked at her a few times. Um, but, um, I, I was like, okay, I'm not going to go now because if I go now, it's, it feels like, imagine, you know, you're just doing stuff at a booth and then some random dude just walks up to you to say hi to you and then leaves. That's awkward as hell. And, it, and it's obvious that the dude wants to speak to you. So I have to wait for, for a very opportunistic moment. I have to wait for a moment where it seems natural that I would have to speak to her. Um, <laughs> And that never came. So I and Thomas waited at the booth for a little while. And um, Theo was like, oh, who are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm Enoch Lai, you know, the vice uh, president of the writing club. And then he's like, he shook my hand and he's like, oh, you know, then this is the right place. Uh, and um, maybe it's because I and Thomas were standing at the booth. For a while, there were a lot of Asian people, specifically Chinese people coming up to us and signing up for some freaking reason because they see, oh, you know, the... Uh, it's this, this club is run by, uh, Asians too, you know, well, you know, I'll see what's up. You know, I, I feel safer here. And it's funny, multiple Chinese people signed up and they had no idea that I'm a Hong Konger and not Chinese. They would be so fucking pissed to, to see, uh, the vice chairperson being a Hong Konger and then the, 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 the president is Chinese, but is raised in freaking Massachusetts and doesn't speak Mandarin all that much. And is also a pro Hong Konger, I guess, in a way, or more like a an anti CCP, or not so much a pro Hong Konger. Um, but yeah, they're they're going to be so pissed. It's amazing. It's it's all it's so much fun. Um, but uh, later, Cat showed up. So this is actually the first time I saw Cat in person. Apparently, apparently, I've never seen her before in person, but I could have sworn I've seen her multiple times already because of the Zoom meetings, but never in person. So. She's like, you're Enoch. And I'm like, yeah. And then we shook hands and stuff. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe, maybe Aika would come too because Aika's with Kat all, all, all along. That never happened. At 2 p.m., we all packed our stuff, you know, packed up the booth, everything, and then we just left. And then Kat's the, the person who's running this booth. So a lot of these props and flyers and everything uh, need to be packed. And I and Thomas helped Kat put all the stuff back to her car. And that is the opposite direction of where Aika is. And so I went back and guess what? Aika's gone already. Rip. There was one point when I uh, went to the bathroom, um, some coffee was on my hands because Betsy ordered like four cups of coffee and she didn't, she only drank one cup. And I, I tried to like hold it and see like if it's empty and then some coffee like went on my hand and I washed my hands and Betsy took me to the bathroom, like showed me where, where it is. And I went back and Ika's right there. I could have just walked up to her and say anything, 
but I didn't. I just did not. Okay, well, screw it. So I and Thomas, we went to the other direction, um, to uh, the bus station, because Thomas wants to go location scouting. Again, Thomas has been to these places already, but he wishes to go again with me. Um, and I was thinking, you know, ooh, wouldn't it be interesting if uh, we have the uh, uh, bus stop incident? This, just like the Pepper bus stop incident, but this time with Aika. And boom, I was right. Aika was sitting right there at the bus stop. And this time, she's alone. Which is actually a little shocking, because I always imagine her to be, like, surrounded by friends. And, you know, like how Pepper al always is surrounded by friends. But this time, no, she's alone. What the heck? And, um, again, it's awkward, because... I can't just walk up to her and say things. She probably noticed me and noticed she knows Thomas and she sees me with Thomas. So she notices me. That's a fact. But I just I just cannot walk up to her and say things and and, you know, talk to her finally in person for the first time <laughs> in in the six months that I know of her existence for the first time we actually talk. No, it didn't happen. So. She just left on bus number seven, and that's it. And it was a shame, yeah. I mean, and it almost reminds me of Mary again. You know, how um, in 2019, October 24th, when Mary had uh, her birthday, I wanted to say happy birthday to Mary, but I didn't have a chance. I, I didn't. I had chances, but I never had the bravery to say anything to her, and I never did. And it almost feels like that. It's almost like Mary all over again. But um, I, I think this time is a bit different because this time Aika's literally associated with me, not only because we, we study in the same major, but also because we are also doing the club stuff. So this time I'm actually confident that I'll end, I'll end up saying things to her and not necessarily befriend her. I don't know if that's possible or not, but at least I'll, I'll, I'll have more chances. More chances will, will show. So... At least there's that. But yeah, it's a shame that I didn't say anything to her. So now I can only do it on the 26th. If Aika doesn't end up in my Film 32 class, then our only chance is literally August 26th, next Friday. And that's fucking it. Which is sad. Which means befriending her is pretty much not a thing that's going to happen. Um, so um, there's that. Um... Now, um, yeah, I and Thomas, um, so I thought Thomas would, I know he doesn't have a car now, but maybe someone, a friend of his would drive around. Um, so his short film is huge. It's a very ambitious short film about a North Korean trying to escape North Korea to meet a South Korean girl just to get shot and die. And it has four freaking locations. One location is a classroom. One location is like uh, the South Korean, North Korean border. And the location, the film location is up north in the canyons, in the mountains, which is extremely far away. And it's a whole hour away from the college campus. And then there are two other locations that's in Koreatown. And that's also like one and a half hours away. And Thomas's plan was to literally take a bus to the canyons, back, and then to Koreatown, and back. And that's stupid. I will not do that. No. But, I mean, it's possible, but it'll be so much time. So, at the end, Thomas just gave up, and, and he's like, okay, you know what? Let's just go to Koreatown. So, fine. So, I and Thomas hopped onto a bus, and we went to Koreatown. We actually went there, and like two idiots... Um, and we went there and we did nothing. We just looked at the location and we talked a little bit and then we left. And it was pointless, basically. And it's especially funny because Thomas is way more ambitious than he should be with this short film. You know, he has all these ideas. Oh, so, you know, actors and all that stuff. And he's actually getting somewhere. He went to Backstage, which is this website where you can recruit actors and there are actually good options. Um, but in terms of the actual logistics of the short film, the scheduling, 
uh, the budget, the crew, the equipment, how it's going to play out, the shots, the craft of it. He has no idea what he's doing. And this is why he needs me. This is why he's asking me for my opinion. And when I ask him about the shot list, he's like, oh, I haven't made it. I just want to do it, you know, you know, on the, on the go, you know, sort of feel free. But that's not how you do it. For a two-minute short film, I, I, I did not only make a sh shot list, I also made storyboard. Your short film has four locations and is really long and has a very complicated plot. Or, or at least way more complicated than my plot. You definitely need a shot list. And then there's a scheduling. And the lunch breaks. And the crew. And the lighting and the camera. He just doesn't know what's going on. And he's like, mm, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. And he even thought, okay. If I'm not able to finish filming this thing in the next two weeks. Maybe I should ask our film class professor and turn my project into a class project so everyone can take part in my project that is insane that will never work he's being so optimistic and ambitious it's honestly laughable um i feel bad for the guy and i low-key just want to leave him be leave his work and just let him fail but i'm a nice guy so i'm not going to do that i'm actually going to help him but sheesh, that's just ridiculous. You can't do that. And he's like, worst case scenario, I'm just going to go to film 33, which is um, the more advanced class, the most advanced class in our film program. And just ask those students to help me. That's no, they'll say no. So yeah, that's, um, that's that. So we went all the way to Koreatown. We talked a little bit. And then I left. It took me a whole hour to come back, to take the bus. And then afterwards, I wanted to take bus number 17. Um, so I downloaded, um, I, I bought a um, bus ticket, $1.1 .1 bus ticket when I took the bus from my college campus to Koreatown. And that ticket isn't expired until like 4.30. And... The bus from Koreatown back to the college campus arrived at 429, and I barely made it. So I, it, I didn't have to pay another ticket. I came all the way back, and I wanted to take bus number 17 because I don't want to walk. I'm super tired. It's really hot. I want to rest. But the bus just doesn't show up, and the next bus comes at 20 minutes later, and I don't want to wait. So I actually walked all the way back here. And that's pretty much today. So yeah, unfortunately, I didn't speak to Aika. It's it's funny because last round it's Pepper. This round it's gonna be Aika. Aika is a new Pepper. I'm not interested in Pepper. Okay, Pepper's a lost cause. Neither am I interested in Aika. I just want an East Asian filmmaker, um, a film lover. That's all. And I'm not talking about East Asian American. I'm talking about East Asian. Okay. It, it it could be a Korean guy, it could be a Chinese girl, I don't care, okay? Like, I just want to befriend someone who's not Pepper, because Pepper's not interested. And Aika's the most probable, or, or the, 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 the other Japanese dudes, um, who may or may not end up in the same class with me. The thing is, last semester, in film 31, Aika and those three other Japanese people are in the same class. They probably befriended and they're probably going to coordinate uh, taking the next class, 32. So I have a theory that whatever class Aika ends up in, either the Wednesday one or the Friday one, the Japanese people, they're all going to follow her. So this is bad news because if Aika ends up on the Friday one, then all the Japanese people will end up on the Friday one. And I know Aika's in the Wednesday one, um, I, I know Pepper's on the Wednesday one, so this will mean that Pepper and I will still be the only two East Asians in that class, because I don't know a single Korean person, or Chinese person for that matter, in our class, aside from Thomas, but he don't count, he, he's raised in Massachusetts, 
Um, so that's hilarious. I also spoke to Theo a little bit. And I, I was actually quite nice. You know, I was, I, I socialized a bit. I spoke to a few people, you know. I was a bit, you know, jolly. And I spoke with Theo. And I don't want to come off rude or anything. But even though Theo looks like he's 20-something years old. Like five years older than me or something. And he's the freaking president. Um, is, is this his first year in this college? Because I'm entering my third year. Right, so he's, um, so I asked him what sort of class he's taking. Apparently, he's also taking film 32. What? And then I asked Wednesday or Friday, and he said Friday. Um, so he's going to be in the same class with Thomas, along with Eric, the Filipino-American, and David, the Swede. And then um, Wednesday, it's me, Pepper, Christian's going to be there. Probably. Not not confirmed. Um and then there's Aika and the other three Japanese people in this major. And I have no idea where they're going to go to. Um, so it's this Wednesday, Friday dichotomy, you know. It's a 50-50 gamble. Um, but yeah, this almost disillusioned me. Because now that a lot of people are saying they're they're on Friday. Um, you know, Thomas is on Friday. The Theo is on Friday. Like, I'm just thinking, like, damn. Nobody's going to turn up on Wednesday. And how did Theo end up in Friday anyways? I mean, if, if he's a new student, unless he's not new. Unless he's not new. Because, I mean, Friday is the, is the class that opened first. So a lot of people who have been in this college for a long time will probably be able to get in Friday one, including me. But I decided to switch to Wednesday because Christian's there. And also Pepper's there, but I don't really care about her now. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, who knows? Maybe I can switch to Friday. Maybe, maybe I can still switch. And the excuse would be, oh, because I want to be with Thomas. Um, maybe I can still do that. Um, and Thomas wants me to switch anyways. So I don't know. But, but either way, when I see Aika the next time, which is the 26th, the classless are probably going to be uploaded already, are going to be known. The canvas will, will actually open around that time. So, I don't know, nervous. And that's it for today. And I guess a couple of other things is, um, so um, the dancer girl who, um, um, so, you know, before I left uh, at the end, at the very end of June, June 30th, I believe, me, Jonah, and a few other people, church folk, we went to a, uh, some mountain wild park to film a music video. And there's a Filipino American, the dancer girl who is also affiliated with the church, also with the dance team. Um, during the quarantine hotel period, she WhatsApped me and talked to me about this dance video that she's trying to make. And um, she said, okay. I'll talk to you about this when you come back. So I just told her that I came back. And she's like, great. I got the gear already. I'm going to talk about the shooting schedule. Next thing is um, on Discord, on the Film Club Discord of my college, there's a page for um, transfers. And a lot of people are discussing, oh, you know, UCLA, I just got rejected. USC, I just got rejected. LMU, I, I got in, you know. Someone got into UCLA, and I kind of want to DM him and ask him how he did it. But I don't want to come off rude, but I would like to do it. And I will do it, because I'm a madman, okay? I am a fucking madman. And this is a war. This is a battle, okay? This is a battle of minds and hearts. And I'm doing it, okay? I will speak to Aika. That has to happen. And that will happen. And I'm confident that it will happen. I will find out the secrets to get into UCLA. And that will happen. I'm not 100% sure if I will get into it or not. But I will try my absolute fucking best. And um, that's it for today. Um, so I'm actually going to have to have dinner here. I'm going to cook dinner here and have dinner here. So my entire meal plans um, has to... Um, 
be adjusted. But um, yeah, I'm going to take out the fish. I'm going to eat the salmon tonight. The feta cheese spinach salmon. And um, I don't know, man. I, I have no idea what's going on with Pepper. Honestly, because she's not speaking to me at all. And I'm just going to leave it be. I don't care about her anyways. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, just, I don't think Potter or JT or anyone like that will want to hang out with me anyways in round two and, and in the rest of the future. So I'm really, aside from Thomas and maybe Pe Pepper will show up again, will recur, a recurring character, you know, but aside from Thomas and Pepper and the film club people and the film major people. That's it. That's it. Round two. Clean slate. Nearly clean slate. And I'm going in head first. And um, yeah, that's all. That's all. And um, again, I, I don't know. I actually come to think of it. Why am I even trying to get East Asian friends in the film circle? I guess it would benefit me a lot more. But I could literally get any. I could literally befriend anyone. And get information from them. And by information, I mean uni application information. Secrets to getting into universities. That's all I need, really. Um, and also someone that I can rely on for short filmmaking. Um, but it, it's better if it's East Asians. Because I just think culturally we work a little better. Maybe. I don't even know. Actually, aside from Thomas, every single East Asian person I know. That I personally know. That I've spoken to are all Hong Kongers, you know, JT, Potter, Pepper, Diana, um, and Kevin. And five is enough, you know, that's already a lot. So, and Diana's um, roommate, Sophie, um, Sophia, Sophie. So, um, you know, I can really, I should really expand my circle, you know, really like, just do it, man. All right, time now is 11.50 um, p.m. I'm just going to wrap it up right now. Cindy's left the apartment for some reason. So I cooked myself dinner. Um, I don't know why, but I was really hungry today, even though I'm not supposed to be. Um, I had the in and outs burger at around 1 p.m. and then at around 8 p.m. And logically, I would be hungry. But really, if you think about the jet lag, 8 p.m. is about... 11 a.m. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm supposed to be hungry, but I it just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, I cook myself dinner and it's um, you know, potatoes, fried potatoes with ketchup, you know, you know the drill and the Italian salad kit. But this time I tried my hands on feta cheese spinach salmon. And it's funny because uh first of all, it doesn't look very appetizing. Second of all, there's there are more there's more cheese in it than there is salmon. And I thought it's going to suck, but actually it's not that bad. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's not that bad. If you tell me to eat a little bit, it's actually fine. But I think um, it's just too much. So at the very end, I, was, I wasn't really huge on it. The feta cheese is very strong. Um, it's not that strong, but if you eat a lot of it, it gets strong, you know. So yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, I ate it all anyways because it's food. How can I turn it down? Oh, one moment. But yeah, um, I cooked the dinner and it's eh. Um, I actually still haven't completely unpacked, even though I went, I came back to LA about three days ago, four days ago. But I actually haven't unpacked and there's actually like sesame oil and oyster sauce in that bag, but I'm just too lazy. 
Um, and I'm also planning to change my toothbrush, but I'm too lazy to change it, but it's like, it's all fucked right now. Yeah, I also filmed the uh, album review before dinner, and um, I was so tired, and also my phone crashed, because not enough storage space, because I talk too much and film too much. Um, ironically. Um, so I'm just gonna end it off here. Um, I'm not gonna do too much later. I'm gonna try to sleep at 4.30 tonight. I'm gonna try my very best, and I hope that Cindy will not turn off the aircon next morning. Or at least if she does it, she does it way later, like at noon or something. Because I, I, I don't want to wake up early, okay? I want to sleep all the way. I'm tired as hell. Um, I was actually wondering today, because given that I slept only four hours yesterday and then four hours a day, when I was in the college fair thing today, I was actually thinking to myself, like, why am I so energetic? You know, well, turns out I'm only energetic because I'm pushing myself. I'm pushing my limits. In fact, I'm tired. Um, so I'm actually really tired right now. Um, yeah, um, I spoke with Christian. So I asked Christian um, if um, he's interested in being Thomas's cameraman, even though I expected him to say no. And guess what? He said no. Uh, he said he has a lot on his plate and he said he's just not interested. And then I asked him if he's on Wednesday, film 32, and he said yes, just to confirm. So now I know Christian and Pepper are also in my film 32. So, okay, my film 32 right now. So this is actually a lot of fun because this is like gambling. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's just, I've never really been in a situation before. It's a very uniquely university slash college situation where you have multiple sections of the same class. And then there are specific people you want to be in the class in, but then you can't coordinate with that specific person because you can't do it yet. That's a very specific situation and very weird one too, but it's, it's kind of fun actually. So the Wednesday, Friday dichotomy goes Wednesday, me, Pepper, Christian, etc. Friday, Thomas, Theo, Eric, David, etc. Now there are tons of other people. Um, I actually haven't asked Betsy. Uh, I haven't asked, um, you know, anyone else. I don't know which class Ika will go to. I wish I could ask. I should have, if I had spoken to Ika today, I would have been able to ask one, were you there in the fireworks on July 3rd? Was that you? B, which Film 32 will you go to? C, what will you do for a short film? And can I help? Like, I would I would say these, th these three things. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I didn't speak to Aika. But again, I, I will eventually show up in front of her um, on that day, uh, on Friday, with Thomas. Um, so I can speak to her on that day. I don't know how it will go down, but I would like to speak to her. So um, there's that. Um, but yeah, again, it's a 50-50 gamble. I hope Aika ends up in my class. Um, I could be wrong, though. A, a, a thing about Aika is that she's blonde because she's dyed her hair. Of course, Japanese people, like every Asian, every East Asian that's... Um, fully east asian they're all black haired okay but a lot of people dye their hair nowadays and um um Aika dyed her hair blonde and in on the day of the fireworks when i the, the girl who i think is Aika is blonde but i noticed something today and that is behind her at the back of her head there were a few strand. There's a strand, a large strand, there were like like a bunch of bluish green hair. So I was thinking, hold on, did I misrecognize her? Maybe that's not her. After all, it's a fireworks. Because if it was her, I would have seen the blue reddish, uh, the bluish green strands. So um, you know, very interesting. Maybe it's a new addition to her hair. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I think the fact that she left alone on the bus says a lot, you know, 
I think that's a good indication because I don't like like people like Pepper and JT are always surrounded by tons of friends and they're the kind of people who are super social and super upfront and you know they're just not very great so it's a good indication there there are certain ways you can tell how interesting a person is if they stare into the air and daydream something's up they think and that's a good thing um all right i speak too much um i'll wrap it up um i won't be doing much tonight uh, a little bit later i'll watch seating of a ghost if i have time i'll watch evangelion i will eat green tea ice cream mochi which is awesome and um, I think I have reached my 2,000 calories count. I mean, the in and out today is already a lot of calories. So, um, yeah. And um, I will not go anywhere tomorrow because I'm tired as fuck. And um, ever since I've come back to um, LA, I've been going out every single day. I mean, and by that, I mean three days in a row. So I would like to just chill in my own room, review, rest, whatever. And that's it. But I think, um, you know what, I, I will I will do one more thing before I stop this video. I shall congratulate myself um, because, you know, again, I know I've said this many times, but back in 2018, I am timid, cowardly. I don't talk to too much people. And if there's someone that I find interesting or want to talk to, there's no way in hell am I ever going to be able to talk to that person, let alone someone... I like, like Mary. Um, but now, nowadays, right? Actually, to be fair, I've technically already spoken to Aika, but it's via Zoom, so that don't count. But nowadays, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm the vice chairperson of the script writing club. I went to the college fair and met all the higher ups in that club. Shook their hands. I shook hands with Kat. I shook hands with Theo. I established myself. And I am so close to speaking to Aika. And I'm actually confident that I'm that I'll able to speak to her this time. I am making friends and I'm traveling around with people now. Even though not as much as Pepper does, but it's fine. Like I have made a name for myself. So like I said, level six. Is upper class because right now I feel like I'm in middle class. I'm doing pretty well, but it could be better. I could ha have even more friends, it's possible, but I need to try harder. So I'm gonna work on that level six, upper class, and then at the same time, level seven, um, internship, level eight, uni app, nine is driver's license, ten is gym, and nine and ten are not urgent. So if I don't do those two things, it's fine. All right, time now is 4.16 p.m. on August 20th. Um, yeah, so I, ju I, I, I just woke up. So I went to bed actually very early yesterday. And by very, I mean the earliest I've been since I've returned, since round two. Um, I went to bed at 5 a.m., right? 5 a.m. I didn't immediately fall asleep, but I quickly fell asleep anyways. And I slept from 5 to 9. So that's four hours. And at 9 a.m., I woke up not because somebody turned off the alarm, uh, turned off the air con. It's still on. I'm just awake because it's too hot for me somehow. Like, the blanket's a little thick, I guess. So I was awake for a little bit, but then I fell back asleep. And then until 1 p.m. I woke up again. And this time it's because of the um, of the air con. The air con finally got turned off. Cindy does her thing and I'm awake. And I didn't immediately fall back asleep because Cindy decided to have a very loud phone call. Two phone calls actually, one in French, one in English. And then afterwards, she was cooking something and she played Beyonce's Renaissance again, basically. And she played from track one until Break My Soul. And then after Break My Soul, she suddenly said, Alexa, pause. And then she went out to pick up something. She received another call and then she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to go immediately. And then she went out and that is when I fell back asleep. And then that's all the way from 
So around at that point, it was around 2 p.m. So I slept from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So altogether, um, that is around nine to 10 hours of sleep. So that's pretty fantastic actually. Um, I had a good sleep, even though it's terrible. I mean, I woke up two times. Um, and one of the times I, I was purely awake for one hour straight listening to Beyonce. But at least, um, at least I slept a lot. But I feel a little guilty now because I'm supposed to beat this jet lag. But now that I've woken up at 4 p.m., my breakfast and my lunch is basically out of the window. I have my meal plans. And I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. So I'm going to try to also eat breakfast and lunch right now. And then maybe at around 10 p.m. I'll have dinner. And then that's it. I'll still try to go to bed at 4.30 tonight. But highly doubt I'll be able to fall asleep quickly. But aside from that, um, today's going to be a chill day. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to film two reviews. Watch three episodes of Evangelion. Watch Pong Juno's Mother. Um... That's it, really. Um, nothing else. Maybe I'll read a little bit. Um, I'll edit my short film. Um, again, that's no rush, honestly. I still have a lot of time. And, um, yeah, I don't got much to worry about at all, actually. Um, aside from, um, right now, my only concern is, you know, whether Aika is going to end up in my class or the Friday class. Um, to be fair, I could switch. I could really just like, oh, if I end up finding out that Ike is not in the class, I could actually ask our professor if I could switch. That's actually totally possible. But that's also silly because Christian and Pepper are in Wednesday and I kind of promised them that I'm also in Wednesday, so I don't want to betray them or anything um, because I'm a nice guy. Um, and I guess that's that, so. Um, yeah, that's all. Um, not, not much else. That's it. Um, I'm happy I'm able to sleep this much. You know, it's right. It's the right thing for me to do. It's the right thing to happen, you know. I'm going to eat a couple cookies for breakfast. I'm going to eat, um, a cup noodle. Actually, should I even do that? Now that I don't really have that much time. I plan to eat cup noodles, but maybe I don't even need to do that. You know what? I'll just eat some bean sprouts and some carrots and just call it a lunch. <laughs> I don't even have eggs in my fridge. I need to buy eggs. Um, I don't know. You know what? I'll eat some snacks for lunch. That's what's going to happen. I will eat um, an apple and probably the lemon yogurt. And then um, that's good enough. And then, you know, I'll have the dinner or whatnot. Uh, tomorrow's Sunday, and obviously I will not go to church because of the jet lag. If I go to bed at 4 a.m. and wake up 7 a.m. tomorrow, I'm basically going to die. And I'm basically going to go fishing again. So, um, nope, not good. Um, but yeah, um, because yesterday I wasn't able to go to the canyons with Thomas, Thomas wants to go this Sunday with the help of his roommate's car um, and then um, on Monday I'll be seeing Thomas again um, in Century City and then we'll go to his apartment and we will discuss um, um, things on the Square Writing Club actually being vice chairperson oh my god and then Monday at that point I should be able to start receiving emails about my new semester about new classes and then at that point, at some point, the canvas is going to open up and I'm going to be able to see who's in my class or not. I didn't have much of, uh, I didn't have many dreams, but I dreamed about, I guess, having a vacation and there's a ghost or a demon or some monster and my mom tried to kill it. And it was kind of a stressful dream. Another dream is, um, I didn't wear my retainer for a long time and now my teeth is all over the place and it's scary and I tried to put my retainer forcefully in onto my teeth and it's just fucked up. Yes, Enoch Lai type dreams, I guess. And uh, that's all. 
that's all for today. All right, so time now is um 6.15. So Cindy basically owns the entire apartment right now. Because Cindy's, um for the last couple of hours, Cindy's been cooking up a lot of food, preparing a lot of spices, and, you know, clearly she has invited a guy over. She's having a bit of a date. And that's funny because last night she also had another guy over. I don't know if it's the same guy or not, uh, but it's a white dude with beard. A blonde white dude with beard. And, um, is that her boyfriend? Has he changed her boyfriend already? Because I remember back in June, she had a black guy for a boyfriend. And she's been saying that she's been dating this black guy. This tall black dude. I've seen that black dude a couple times, you know, fixing the TV stand, decorating stuff. And then there's another white guy that she watched a movie with, 500 Days of Summer, like right before I left in July. There's another white guy. Now we have another guy, the third guy. Are you kidding me? Is this a, is this a friendship thing or is this a dating thing? Because if it's a dating thing, that's problematic. And she'd be, and you know what? Dating life, I don't care. She's owning the entire apartment right now. So I actually planned to cook pork cubes and soybeans, sprout beans, bean sprouts for lunch. Um, even though it's 6 p.m. Not real lunch time, but it's lunch for me. Now I prepare myself some cup noodles. I'm a very healthy man, I know. But she owns the whole apartment. I can't eat outside. I can't do shit outside. I'm going to have to hide in my bedroom again for the next few goddamn hours or so until dinner time. Uh, for me, anyways. Dinner time for them now. This is, this is an absolute mess. Oh my god. Okay. So this is the first time I've ever cooked uh, bean sprouts. So, um, so happy I found this in the market. Let's try it. Added soy sauce, salt, pepper, garlic, powder, actual garlic and ginger powder. Let's try it. Wow, so salty. All right, time now is 2.17 a.m. in the morning. Um, I just had a nearly four hour long chat, actually three hours and 20 minutes long Discord call with the guy who interviewed me. So I'm, I've talked so much already. I've never talked this much in such a long time. My mouth is broken. Um, my other followers tweeting me on Twitter. Um, things are happening. So yeah, right now I'm gonna just do a couple things. Okay, so the guys left. When I had dinner, um, Cindy and that white dude, they were together in, in her bedroom. I don't know what they did. I don't fucking care. Um, but yeah. I'm gonna watch Pong joon Mother, the movie, um, but before that I have to um, edit my rock climbing video. I actually originally planned to edit it yesterday, but I didn't have time. I'm gonna do it now. And um, I won't edit my school update video. Not school update, college update, thoughts update. I'll edit it tomorrow. Maybe I'll go location scouting with Thomas tomorrow. If not, I'll stay at home whole day. Um, the teacher from the church texted me a little bit um, but um, didn't ask me if I want to go to church tomorrow. Probably because I told him I have jet lag. So no church tomorrow. That's that. And um, that's all. I'm going to eat um, my lemon yogurt. Um, and probably a Fuji apple. Because I didn't have much of a lunch. My lunch is just a cup noodle. And that's 360 calories. That's not much. Um, I actually plan to eat pork this lunch, except I woke up at 4 p.m., so that's out of the window. And I'm hungry now, so there's that. And um, not much else. Um, all right. All right. Um, <clears throat> time now is 12.24 after noon um, on August 21st. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, shit, August 21st. Is, is there something special today? Um, no, not really. But a couple days later, it would be my grandma's birthday. Okay. Um, yeah, I slept from, 
I slept really late. I went to bed at 6 a.m. and I couldn't fall asleep. Maybe it's because I ate food right before I slept. I ate the lemon yogurt, which tastes really good. Um, but I ate the lemon yogurt last night and maybe it's the whole um, energy thing. But um, I couldn't fall asleep until 6.30 something. And then I woke up by the alarm at 11. Uh, 11.40-ish? Uh, 11.30-ish? Actually, I think just 11. Um, because I thought, you know, maybe Thomas, a Chinese dude, would want to go to the canyons with me. Um, and uh, he did. He do want to go to the canyons with me. He does. And he said he wants to go around two. So I'm like, okay. So I went back to bed for a little more. For, for one more hour, to be exact. But I couldn't fall asleep. So yeah, I'm actually extremely tired right now. But that's necessary because I want to sleep earlier tonight. Yes. So 4.30 tonight, please. Um, But yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, the whole energy thing, um, came from Cedric, I guess, when Cedric ordered pepper lunch, uh, after our dinner, Cedric jokingly said, oh, I, w I, can I can't, I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight, and I'm like, what, why, and she, he said, oh, because I, I'm eating food very late at night, I have a lot of energy, so I wouldn't sleep. And I'm like, what? And Natalie's like, yeah, that's true. That's true. So I guess that's true now. Um, but yeah, essentially there's that. Um, you know, I, I've come to realize that aside from locations going with Thomas again today and then seeing Thomas again tomorrow for lunch and discussing plans for the script writing club. I actually have no plans at all next week. I actually have no plans at all. Um, yeah, I actually, uh, got no plans. So, of course, um, the coming Friday, it's going to be, what day is it today anyway? It's a, it's a Sunday, okay. The coming Friday, I'm going to go shoot the short film. And I'll probably go to Ralph's again at some point next week. But yeah, I really don't have any plans at all. Um. Um. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean. It's no, not a big deal. And then um, school starts, and that's pretty much it. Um, I don't expect to hang out with Potter or Kevin or JT at all, or Pepper at all. Any time in the future of my life at this point. Uh, so, uh, there's that. Um... Well, also, um, Cindy did turn off the aircon today, but I didn't wake up because of that. So that's kind of magical. And it's kind of funny because last night Cindy kept turning on the aircon. So at around dinner time, it was really cold. And I was thinking to myself, wow, why is Cindy suddenly turning on the aircon? She's suddenly not afraid of the aircon. That's because uh, a guest is coming, you know, the guy, the white guy with the beard. And it was getting really cold, so I turned it off, and she turned it back on. So I tried to make the aircon hotter. It was at 50-something degrees Fahrenheit, which I guess is like 12 Celsius, which is really fucking cold. I don't know how much is it actually in Celsius, but I'm just guessing. I tried to... um higher the temperature I tried to make it higher and then Cindy popped out of her bedroom when the white guy was in there to to turn it back on and make it colder so uh 
That's hilarious. And this morning she hates aircon all of a sudden and turns it off. So uh, that's great. This apartment is basically dominated her, do dominated by her right now. Like, if she invites another guy over next week, you know, and decides to hold another fucking feast and dominates the whole kitchen, well, rip. I guess I can't use the kitchen now. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the new roommate, whoever that person is, because I hope that new roommate is gonna benefit me somehow. So yeah, please be an East Asian. Please. And not, you know, a Chinese person who is politically aligned with the CCP. Not something like that. Just an East Asian. That's all I need, man. Then I would win some, you know. Um, But yeah, you know, Thomas wants, Thomas was like, let's go out now. And I'm like, hell no. I just woke up. I'm so fucking tired. At least give me some time to make breakfast and lunch and let me do one movie review first. And then I'll go. So uh, there's that. I just had a quick dream about having to take a photo of Martin Scorsese. And I didn't want to embarrass myself, but I did. So yeah, that's that. that that's hat. That's that. Oh, fuck. I'm so tired. I want to just sleep tonight, but I cannot. Because tomorrow I'll also be seeing Thomas again. So I have to also wake up by the alarm tomorrow. Wow. Really, it really feels like nothing. It feels like the desert. Wait, what time did we get out? I have no idea. The beach. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, just a straight line, just a pole, and not made of wood. Oh my god, just climbed my way up this thing. Fucking hell. Wait, how do I get down? Fuck. Oh, come on, this is even worse than that one. Yep, this is a bit better. How can you tell it's Nazi? It was. Was?
Well, we found Jeff Bezos. Really? David Lynch reference. David Lynch reference. Oh, there we go. The Hollywood tour car. Bunch of idiots. We're at Mulholland Drive. I'm so tired. Fuck this. Ah. Don't get hit by a car because the healthcare won't won't pay for it. Ooh. David Lynch reference. This is the Sunset Strip, my dude. This is where the youth and I don't know what's going on outside, but um, doors have been opening and closing. Time now is 8.03 um, p.m. And um, okay, time now is 8.03 p.m. Um, about one and a half hours ago, I finally returned home. Oh, she's coming back. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, let's talk about today real quick. I want to talk. I'm in the mood of talking, you know. I'm in a talking mood. So, um, at, um, at 2.30, he picked me up. You know, um, that's real late. Or was it 1.30? No, he picked me up at 2.30. He said, is 1.30 okay? And I'm like, yeah. And then he was late. And then he said, oh, is 2 o'clock okay? And then I'm like, yeah, okay. And then he en he ended up at outside of my apartment at two thirty, and then we just drove off to the canyons. We went to um this canyon called oh shoot what's the, what's the name of the canyon the Palisades um it's really far up north um so Westwood and Brentwood and then you go upwards and then you'll reach this canyon. And it's called the friggin' um, shoot, I have no idea what, what the name of the canyon was that I went to. So Thomas refers to it as the Pacific Palisades, but apparently it's called Sullivan Canyon. But anyways, we went there and, um, you know, I, I'm fine with a bit of exercise, you know, I'm fine with a bit of hiking, a little bit of walking. It's, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. You know, I got my water bottle, it's half filled, and I'm ready to go, you know. I got my short pants because I know it's going to be um, uh, hot. So uh, we arrived, and um, we started walking, walking, walking. We walked on the main road, and then Thomas kept going. At one point, Thomas saw at the side that there's a way you can climb up, and it's a very steep. It's not even like staircase, it's literally just rocks. But not not steep enough to be a wall, but also not flat enough to be like walkable. So I need to actually climb up there. And then there's another way down and it's just branches. So after that point, I'm like, I'm just ready to go home, you know. But oh boy, that is only the beginning. And then Thomas went to this small path. And then we went down and 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 deep and deep and deep and deep and deep into the canyons. The views are nice, but oh my god, it's so hot, and more importantly, it's so dry. I drank all the water. By the end of that hike, I drank all the water. And these plants, they're so 
prickly because because Los Angeles is such a dry place, the plants are naturally prickly, thin, and crunchy, and they hit you. They hit my leg, and I was wearing short pants, so they keep brushing my my legs and my thighs. Um, so it's it's a nightmare. And then there were bees and mosquitoes, but they weren't even like the biggest concern, you know. It was just so hot and tiring, and I was running out of breath, and I was so thirsty, and uh, yeah, it was bad. And he kept going. So Tom's wasn't tired at all. I guess partially it's because Thomas said it himself. He said he he used to do this cross country marathon thing when he he was in high school, and uh, you know I'm I'm from Hong Kong. I'm a city boy. So I, I'm not used to hiking like that. But also to be fair, hiking like this is actually a lot more vigorous than a normal hike in Hong Kong. It actually it would actually take less time and it would be less dangerous to hike around the peak, like way less dangerous. So this was actually very vigorous for me. Like at one point I was still hanging on like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. But near the end, especially when we were walking backwards, I'm just like, fuck, just kill me already. It was actually so bad. Like usually when we go on hiking, like we would stop for a moment and breathe, but Thomas never stopped. We kept going and going and going and it was all sand and dirt on my shoes. And it's terrible. I'm going to wash it later. This is absolutely awful. My shoes are absolutely fucked. It's the same pair of blue shoes I've been wearing since last year. And it's nearly broken already. I've got one pair of shoes left. I need more shoes, actually. I realized that I, all my life in, in LA, I've been wearing the same two pairs of shoes. It's either the blue one, the blue Nike one, which is borrowed from um, my... Uh, younger cousin's friend and the um the, the the green one the um brownish green one which is bought in um westfield culver city nordstrom rack and that's the only two shoes i've been wearing but yeah anyways um we walked and we walked and we walked and it was so tiring and uh, that's it and then tom is like just real quick let let's check out another canyon so we drove to uh, another canyon called the Cold Water Canyon, and then we looked for a little bit, about ten minutes. And even though I was super tired and sweaty, when I got to the car and there was air conditioning, I was fine really quick. I recovered really fast, and uh, we went to the Cold Water Canyon, and that place isn't really good because it's full of private property and rich people. And then we went to Mulholland Drive. Wow, David Lynch reference. That's crazy. And then we went to a bit of a canyon place over there, but we only looked for about five minutes and it's like, okay, there's no way in hell are we gonna film here. So uh, we went to uh, Thomas's apartment. It's the second time I've been to his apartment. And uh, so I know the place. I saw his roommate, Pablo, who is um, Hispanic. Uh, he fist bumped me. He's like, what's up? And he fist bumped me. Um, and then that's it. And then, you know, at around 5.40ish. So I went to Thomas's apartment to look at um, Thomas's plans, uh, his shot list for a short film, as well as um, the actors and actresses who signed up for um, his short film in Backstage.com. I looked a little bit and then, okay, he's gonna drive me back home. So Thomas drove me back home, that's it, bye-bye. So that's the whole day and then I took a big fat shower and uh, now I feel clean again and I'm so hungry because this morning I ate the red bean bun which is not very good for some reason and then I ate the in my meal plan spreadsheet I plan to eat the burger buns and the smoked turkey ham um, with honey mustard but I don't want to fucking eat that shit man I'm so sick. I just went back from Hong Kong and whenever I eat food in Hong Kong, it's so much better. Like it's so much better than whatever junk ass plastic bitch ass food I'm eating here. It's so bad. Okay. Um, but yeah, there have been a couple of interesting conversations between me and Thomas. Honestly, I feel like I and Thomas at the end of the day, we can't really talk too much deeply because Thomas is not a very deep person. Thomas is like, What's up? You know, what's up? Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, if I say anything remotely abnormal, Thomas is going to be like, hmm, you're literally insane. But it's funny because that's not an American thing, actually. I mean, that could be a Californian thing. But 
when I spoke to the guy last night, you know, the guy who interviewed me, you know, we did have some pretty personal talk and it was nice. And I did say some deep stuff and he said some deep stuff and we were actually vibing with each other, you know. So it's definitely not an American thing. There are Americans out there who are uh, capable of of deep thinking, okay? Just difficult to find in LA is all. Um, but yeah, essentially, um, one thing I did say to Thomas is that, like, man, you're, you're so confident. You're the most ambitious person I've ever met. And I also told him how optimistic he is because he's always like, ooh, you know, ooh, I'm in script writing class. You know, I want to write a script so good that Netflix is going to pick up. Oh, I'm the script writing club president now. Um, I want to make a splash so that UCLA and USC will notice me. Oh, uh, I want to make... Uh, apparently, he had never made a short film before. And his first short film requires so many goddamn locations with a nine-page script. Like, that's so ambitious for, for a first short film. And he's so confident that he's going to be able to do it. He's so damn confident. And um, it's actually funny because it's so unrealistic. And to be fair, I'm also equally as ambitious. I want to make epic movies. I want to make tons of movies. I want to, you know, culturally enhance Hong Kong. That is my goal in life. And that's crazy. I mean, a lot of people fail to do that. But I, my ambition is more calculated. Like, I know I won't be able to do that now because I'm still an amateur at filmmaking. I have plans. I calculate. I have steps. I have strategies, you know? Like, right now, I focus on my short films. I focus on getting into university. I focus on networking. And then I start making something. I do more short films. I debut feature film. And then I, I do things. And then I have plans. I do things, I do everything with steps, but Thomas isn't. And that's funny because Thomas told me, like, that's funny because my roommate told me that I'm too pessimistic. And by my roommate, I mean Thomas's roommate, Pablo. And that's funny because I guess in my standards, I guess in East Asian standards, Thomas is already considered very optimistic. Um... So, uh, yeah, that's, that's that. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I don't know. Um, I've been, one moment that got me a little worried is because Thomas hadn't confirmed the cast and crew for his short film yet, he may not be able to film it this Friday, the coming Friday, which is literally, literally six days later. Um, which is a very tight, I know, but I really want to go this Friday because Aika will be going. And if Aika goes, I have to go. That is my only chance. If Aika doesn't end up in my class, well, then it's all ruined. It's all screwed. I won't be able to get his, get her IG. I won't be able to speak to her. Okay. And it's not like the moment I see her is the moment I, I, I get her Instagram. I have to meet her a few times and talk to her a few times in order for me and her to be comfortable to have each other's Instagram. It's not the first, it's not a first time thing, okay? So I have to meet her somehow regardless. And Thomas was like, mm, maybe I can't make it. Maybe it's too early. Like, I know Thomas is very confident, that, but Thomas was also like, oh, you know, maybe I can just, you know, move the production dates later, you know? And I'm like, well, you know, you gotta, you know, why not focus on that specific scene first, the classroom scene, and find those actors and find the crew and get the equipment first and then worry about other characters and other scenes. So, uh, yeah, I hope I hope Friday works out, you know, because I have to see Aika. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know what's what's this attitude and why. But like, it's like I just gave up on Pepper and the only other person that I know who could, who, who I could potentially befriend is Aika. And it's just like, if Aika is not it, then I have to move on to another person, another person, another person. And it's going to be so freaking funny. Um, but right now, I just really hope Aika ends up in my class. That would solve the, the, the whole issue. 
If Aika does end up in my class, then it doesn't even matter if Friday doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a 50-50 gamble, really. I want to switch to Friday, but that would be betraying Christian and Pepper. I mean, Pepper doesn't matter. If I betray Pepper, Pepper wouldn't give a shit. Christian, I don't want to hurt him. He's a nice guy. Um... But the thing is, I hate, I would really hate it if I switched to Friday and then somehow learn that Aika ended, ended up on Wednesday. So I don't want to make any move now. You know, it's it's the same idea with, you know, if you play Blackjack and you don't know if you should keep your cards or you should switch them. Because you don't know, you know, if, you know, you, you, you don't know if you're going to get better cards or worse cards. So you sort of wait around and see what other people get first. Right now, that's sort of like my mentality now. It's a gamble to have Aika and also other Japanese people. Because those other Japanese people, they're going to follow Aika. I'm 100% sure of that. Or at least 90% sure. Um, those other Japanese people, they're going to be with her. They're going to somehow orchestrate it together. <laughs> and... It's a 50-50 gamble. Again, it's 50-50. I'm, I'm putting my trust on Wednesday. Wednesday has my vote. Only because I know Aika only started college later than me. And I know that because of that... Um, or is he the same year? I don't know. Okay, Aika's probably later than me. Right? And if that's the case, then it means her priority in registering, in, 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 in enrolling in classes is lower than me. Which means that she cannot get into the Friday one. And then Wednesday class opens, and then she immediately gets into the Wednesday class. Why? Because she's attentive. So the moment Wednesday opens... She pops in. That's my theory. The other issue is, what if she's not attentive and Wednesday opened up and it is completely filled up and now she's on a wait list to the Friday one? That could happen, but the chances of her popping into the Wednesday one is a lot higher. So I, I have my vote on Wednesday, man. I Wednesday has my vote. And the truth will be revealed when Canvas is uploaded. When the canvas is opened, the truth will be revealed. And oh boy, that day is the day of the reckoning. Oh my god, that day is the day of the reckoning. Um, but yeah. <laughs> it's so pathetic that my life now, you know, my life now has boiled down to betting between Wednesday and Friday and, and guessing so hard which class will the Japanese girl end up in. That is like how much my life is boiled down to right now. It's it's honestly pathetic. And I don't know what to do with my life now, man. Um, so, uh, yeah. That's... In the event that she ends up at, in on Friday, it's not the end of the world, actually. But it would be quite detrimental. It would be a little bit. Because I could still somehow work my way into the EAS. You know, I could... You know, even if Aika isn't in my class, there's a chance that maybe some Japanese person or some East Asian would be in my class. That's not Pepper. I hope. And I could befriend that person and then somehow work my way in with Aika. I don't know. But, yeah, you know, essentially there's that. And um, um that's one way the other way is the film club thing except i know that film club will not have that many in-person meetings and why the hell would i befriend someone over zoom that's near to impossible unless i'm jt right and i have no idea when will pepper be back from australia but it doesn't even matter apparently thomas did text pepper like near the end of july asking pepper hey are you still interested in being a part of my short film and of course Pepper's like yeah of course yeah and then Pepper doesn't say a single goddamn thing to Thomas again for the next one 1,000 years of course 
Pepper doesn't matter now, okay? Pepper's out of the window. I don't know when will Pepper be back. I know I'll see her when class begins. I know that. I, I, I know I'll see her next next Wednesday. I know that. That's true. I'll see her face. She'll be standing right there. We'll say hi to each other. But it doesn't matter now. She's out of the equation now. I have moved on. So, um, insane. Insanity. Stuff. Things. Yeah. And, um, yeah, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's my life now. So I'm actually super free next week. So today, tomorrow, I'm going to see Thomas again, and we're going to discuss script writing club ideas, and which is going to be cool because I'm the fucking vice chairperson. Also, somehow Thomas ended up being the co-vice president of film club. Somehow he became that and he didn't even know that. But I'm still not. You know, I'm still a vice president of Script Writing Club. But, you know, maybe I can work my influence. You know, maybe, maybe. You know, some house of cards shit, you know. So, but yeah, that's essentially tomorrow. So I'll have to wake up tomorrow a little early again. Fuck. Nothing happens. And then Friday, I hope Friday happens. If Friday doesn't happen, I'll be a sad boy. I'll probably go to, I'll probably go to church next month, next Sunday. Probably. Um... And I'll go to uh, Nijia Market again. I want to buy fruit juice, eggs, um, stuff like that. I want to buy uh, lettuce, actually, because I got those burger buns, and I don't know what to do with those. Um, yeah. I'm going to cook myself dinner now. And um, I'll eat some mochi ice cream tonight. I won't be able to pass 2,000 cows, but that's okay. That's okay. It's fine. I passed it yesterday and I passed it uh, two days ago. So I, I'm still maintaining my weight real real good. And at some point after my jet lag is completely fixed, I will tell the Chinese boss lady that I'm back. I'll, I'll notify Hana as well because she's a, she's a nice person. And um, yeah, so there's that. But at the same time, it's also so unexciting. Like at the same time, life... It's also so unexciting for me because, because, um, <laughs> like, aside from maybe seeing Aika in my film class, I, I feel like, um, the rest of the next four months is going to be more church, more well, more Ralph's and Nijia, rinse, wash, repeat, and that's it. I don't know what HKOS is up to, but I'm sure something interesting will happen, I hope. Um, but yeah, the only two things that may interest me in the following four months is really, um, film class and HKOS. That's it. Um, and of course we got the next five levels. Um, the next five, um, which is, uh, upper class again with Ica, that's part of level six. Everything with film class in college is part of level six, basically level seven internship. Gotta do something about that. Um, level 8. Um, uni app. I'm gonna... Tonight, I'm gonna DM the guy, okay? The guy on Discord Film Club who says he got into UCLA. I'm gonna DM the guy and find out the truth. Um, and then um, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, driver's license, gym. Not too urgent. I'll figure that out after school starts. Right now is a little too early, a little too premature, but yeah, I'm gonna, again, cook dinner now, it's dinner time, baby, um, yeah, okay, holy absolute balls, I was gonna cook rice for myself for dinner, and I cannot find my rice cooker, and I could have sworn I put it back in my room, so I looked all over my room, I cannot find it, I looked at my cabinets, did not find it and so I looked final resort I looked at my own vlogs to see that on the last to see where did I pack it because I usually film myself packing but also I want to know if um, there is a rice cooker on the countertop at the kitchen on the last day because maybe I forgot to put it back in my room or maybe I decided to hide it in the kitchen so I flickered all I opened and closed all the cabinets here and finally Holy shit. I don't know who put it here, but, uh... 
Wait, where's my cup? Is it inside? Oh my god. Oh, there we go. So Cindy probably did this. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's okay, fuck. That's... Okay, come on, where's the... There we go. Okay, okay, calm down. Okay, this time around, I'm gonna try something, spe something, something special. I'm gonna boil the broccoli, the carrots, and the potatoes at the same time. This water is tap water, so it's not good for soup. But after boiling them, um, make, making sure all the stuff is soft, I'm gonna remove the broccoli first, of course, and then this soft stuff, and then I'm gonna boil this. I don't know what's happening. So with the remaining carrots and potatoes, I'll, f I'll boil it with these porks, and then afterwards I will fry it in a pan with oyster sauce and lots of water. Not tap water, but this, in order to create a thick, nice sauce. And uh, this one is gonna be garlic broccoli, simple as that. Rice, all good, 300 milliliters. I mean, 100 raw, dust 300. All right, so change of plans here. Um, I spoke to my mom a little bit and, and apparently boiling the pork will make it really hard. So I, uh, my mom told me to marinate it with uh, um, sugar and soy sauce, except um, I don't have soy sauce right now. All I have is Maggi, so I use Maggi instead. I also put some um, garlic powder, um, but yeah, I'm gonna essentially marinate it a little bit. I know it's a little late for marination, but um, you know, I'll still do it. Do it with the hands, very primal, rub it around, nice, yam the sugar, nice, um, and then I'll fry it. And it's kind of thick, so I'll have to like put a lid on it and put some water and it's going to be nice. Um, but you know, a lot of people are, or, or at least I used to think it's either fry drying, dry frying or just boiling with water but actually it's kind of a spectrum so i can fry it first make sure it's super like cooked throughout and then i can uh then you know fry with water it, it also works broccoli is ready All right very quickly cooked uh let's use this one Let's flip it around. Ooh, it's got a lot of fat. It's rendering. Oh shit! Fuck. Okay. All right, I uh, mixed up all the carrots and potatoes. I'm gonna add some uh, oyster sauce for the first time in my cooking in LA. Oh, like that. That's a lot already, okay. Now I shall fry them, add salt, pepper, add water, and uh, hopefully um, it tastes something awesome, you know. I'm also gonna add some ginger powder and some garlic powder, just because, why not? All right, here we go, potato, carrot, pork, oyster sauce, whatever mixture, with um, garlic broccoli and rice. Let's try this uh, abomination that I somehow made. Um, let's do it. Cheers. To a new chapter of cooking, making cooking more exciting. Soft carrot, nice. Oh wow. Oh wow. This is actually really good. Mmm. Damn.
hundreds of years, right? You know, the Roman Empire, the fucking slavery period in America, 400 years, we have never had that privilege. So now we're getting a little like leeway and we're like, yeah, we got our fucking shit down pat, but we don't. We are just experiencing freedom. Whereas these white people have had it for centuries. They've known what it was for centuries, but we are just experiencing this. So we're like, yeah, this is this is it, but it's not. It's not what it is. My point is, we need to get out of this. I need to buy a fucking bushy. But that's very different from what I was thinking of. But yeah, you're definitely the best. I I can totally agree. Like I see your food, I see your industry. With bad argument for it, you know. But I also think whatever you say applies to everyone as well. It's so great because that's that's how we all watch it. Also, to make sure we chase it and it's a good. All right, time now is um one fifty five p.m. um a.m. in the morning. Um, quick update here, I guess. Um, I don't have a lot to say. I'm just gonna wrap it up today. Today's an okay day. Nothing all that crazy happened. I like hanging out with Thomas, and I'm comfortable hanging out with him nowadays. Like I act fine. I just act like myself, and it's very weird that I'm acting like myself, but in English now. <laughs> um. But yeah, um, I'll be hanging out with him tomorrow. All right, so time now is 2.12. Um, that is a very strange um, experience. Um, so where was I? Right. So um, I had dinner. And then after dinner, um, which is surprisingly successful, um, pork cubes. I. It's very complicated, actually. So I marinated them a little bit with sugar, garlic powder, and Maggie. And then let it sit for like five minutes. I don't know. And then fry it until it's about fully cooked. And then I put all the stuff in. Uh, the stuff in, you know, carrots, um, potatoes. I chopped up the potatoes, chopped up the carrots, and I just fried the whole thing. And then I added so much stuff: salt, pepper, garlic powder again, ginger powder, and most importantly, oyster sauce. And then I added a little bit of water here and there. Um, and then I just let it, you know, cook for a little bit because I want the sauce, you know. And it turned out nice, actually. Like, my first bite, my first taste of that dish is actually really good. It's nothing like I usually have at home, but it's closer. It feels a little bit more Chinese. It feels a little bit more homely, which is really nice. Um, but, of course, given that I have to eat the whole thing, you know, I, at some point it started to get repetitive. But yeah, on top of that, I have broccoli fried with garlic, simple as that, and rice. And it's a good meal, and it's about a thousand calories, including the Pepsi. Good. Um, and yeah, I feel full. But I'm still going to eat the two mochi ice cream, and then I'm done with the day. While I was, um, you know, editing my college video and whatnot, um, Cindy has invited another guy over, um, a Caribbean guy. He has a very heavy... Caribbean, West Indian, um, Jamaican, Haitian-ish accent. At first I thought it was a European, but then I, I grabbed my empty cup of water and I went outside to, you know, 
pour my uh give myself some more water not really pour eject myself some water just as an excuse to look at the guy um it's black he's black so then i came to the conclusion that he's west indian um and it's funny because they had some pretty serious discussion on racism history and pride um the guy was like oh we need to be humble and then cindy's like no we cannot be humble like as a black woman in a white dominated society i need to be proud of myself and the black guy's like yeah that's true but but still you know you know we need to be humble and he started talking about all the history like 500 years ago how the portuguese uh and how the spanish uh colonized the americas in slavery and he talked about how we should deal with it now and like it's suddenly a very like serious discussion it's honestly hilarious and um yeah so that's that that passed so i'm you know i edited my college video i uh, i exported it what not about 20 minutes ago cindy suddenly called me and she sounds like she's crying and she sounds like she's in deep pain um and um yeah and i thought okay what what the heck's going on you know and cindy said okay she feels she doesn't feel right and she said the paramedics will come and I'm like yeah, like in my heart i'm like what and so i unlocked the door and i was waiting for the paramedics to knock on the door of course that didn't happen because you need to open the door the gates to the apartment building first before you open this door obviously so Cindy called me again saying that the, par the paramedics are outside so I immediately like within 20 seconds I changed to my clothes I grabbed the socks from here and I rushed out I don't know what's going on with Cindy I thought she had a depression attack and suddenly slit her wrist and she's losing blood but actually it's nothing that dramatic I rushed out and there was a couple of tall white dudes um, in masks with um, blinking um, uh, emergency truck at the back. Sort of like an ambulance, I guess. Basically an ambulance. I think it's an ambulance, but it's not making any noise. Quiet ambulance. <laughs> um, um, and um, he's like, oh, you must be. And I'm like, uh, yeah, is it for Cindy? And they're like, Cindy, who's that? Uh, is she your girlfriend? And I'm like, no, my roommate. So they followed me into the apartment. I brought them in and I took them to her room. And I just stood outside. I didn't want to go back to my room and act like nothing's happened. So I stood outside and waited for them to leave because I want to know what's going on as well. Um, turns out Cindy took some medication and she had an anxiety attack of sorts where she's having very serious heartbeats and she couldn't breathe really, you know. Almost like something that would happen to Natalie frequently back in the days. Um, so it's nothing that serious. It's maybe a, um, a sympathetic nervous response to medication. Or maybe it's just purely an anxiety attack, a panic attack. Um, something along the lines of that, you know. Um, I don't know. So I waited for them to leave. And then... And then um, they asked Cindy again, like, the guy outside, is he your boyfriend? And Cindy's like, no, he's my roommate. And then the guys came out. They, they checked her and they were like, mm, your blood looks good. Your heart looks good. Are you taking any medication? And Cindy's like, yeah, you know, stress. Stress from what? From work. Work, what sort of work you do? So blah, 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 blah. And then they left. And then they spoke to me and they said, uh, can you check up on her a couple hours later? And I'm like, um, okay. They asked me if I have a car and I said nope and and I thought by by that they they want me to like take her to the hospital if need be so I asked them like do I have to take her to a hospital and they're like oh no no need so at the end they're like they even asked me like how well do you know her and I'm like eh, I mean I, I moved in since April and they're like okay that's a pretty long time ago but like to me like four months isn't enough to know someone well um but um yeah especially given that i spent one month not even here 
and then they left and then i said thank you and then they're like okay thank you for your service and then they left <laughs> it's funny because the first thing they asked actually is like does she have covid and i'm like i don't think it's covid related but yeah essentially that happened so that's weird so in about 4 a.m i'm gonna check on her i'm gonna knock on her door and ask her if it's okay if she's okay if she's doing well and um that's that's pretty much it yeah